strongest character in ReZero? Who is Pandora? That's a very good question. The Witch of Vainglory or Vanity. A being that exists outside the seven deadly sins. The OG sins. What is it all about? For the longest time, I'm sure we've all believed Reinhardt to be the most powerful character in ReZero. Yeah. But what happens when that overwhelming power meets someone who can bend reality into whatever form she sees fit? Hmm. Reinhardt has a blessing or divine protection called immunity against reality bending. Also, Reinhardt has a blessing or divine protection called 100% win rate against a lollies. Yeah, Reinhardt's gonna win. Well, it makes for a clash between two people who literally cannot die. While that does sound very interesting to see, we only got a very brief glimpse as to what this new character is actually capable of, parts of which we'll get a lot more detail on as we go through the cut content for this episode. So, let's do as we usually do and take a look at what the anime left out from the novels. Yes, sir. Let's begin. But first... Episode 43. No ad. The Day Alpha Orion is Left. Covering parts... What? The day that Alpha Orion is left? I thought it was the day that Betrigus left. Huh? What? I I is it reference to Betrigus? Who the fuck is this? I thought... It was the day that Betrigus left. Ryan is left. Covering parts of chapter 2 and the rest of chapter 3 from the light novel. Okay. Picking things up right from where we left off. The way that Regulus was maintaining his composure was approaching a level of surrealism that neither Juice nor Fortuna could even begin to fathom. What I mean is that for someone like him to have waltzed into such a hostile environment without so much as a single concern was a very apparent display of his own confidence. And it's not because he's backed by Pandora, is it? Or is it just that he thinks that he's him, and no one is comparable to him? It was as if he already knew that nothing could be done to hurt him. I mean, he doesn't really seem to take any damage, right? He gets hurt sometimes, but it's when he's off guard and like, whatever his authority is inactive, right? He has gotten manhandled by the invisible hands, right, of Juice. He also got hit by Fortuna when he was distracted. But sometimes he does have this like crazy guard up when he's like aware and can react. In any case, the way Juice and Regulus were speaking to each other indicated that they were already acquainted. Mm. But it was quite clear that even if they were, neither had any bit of liking towards the other. So as Juice questioned Regulus's intentions, that's when we get to the part where Pandora makes her first appearance. According to the novel, Pandora's very existence is supposed to embody the ideal image of beauty. Okay, I mean, listen, lollies don't do it for me, guys. If it's not like a segment, right? If they don't have, if they don't look like, Echidna does it for me, but like, I'm sorry, this is the embodiment for lollycons. Much to the point that if it was possible to kill through beauty alone, then that was the level of beauty Pandora possessed. Kill through beauty Her alone? Her looks were quite literally capable of killing, and- her looks are capable of killing? Her looks are capable of sending you to fucking jail if you diddle her. Even her aura by itself was enough to emanate this feeling of unworthiness to the people around her. Alright. So, had she been confronting any other regular person, then everything from the way she looked at them to the way she spoke was enough to make them drop dead on the spot. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, first impressions, she speaks in a very soft tone. Right? It's, it's like, and... She, does, she doesn't seem bothered at all. She seems to be in absolute control the entire time. And, and, and as we've seen in her reality bending abilities, that's probably why. What else? She shows, her, she shows her toes a lot. She also is appreciative of what's happening in front of her. Rather than just trying to eliminate Juice and, you know, Fortuna to get to Amelia. She is like, oh my god, what such devoted love I'm seeing. Regulus, look, isn't this amazing? Like... She seems to... I don't know, I'm trying to understand this girl's mentality. I mean, just the prospect of being acknowledged by her could instill this overwhelming feeling of happiness capable of stopping a beating heart. It was one of the many facts made apparent from just a single glance at her. Hmm. In fact, a single look was really all it took to determine that this was a being who shouldn't be allowed to exist. That angle. Because Juice already knew all of this far too well, he shifted his focus towards Pandora and asked a leading question. He wanted to know if she found what she was doing to be too cruel. 
Even for you. Is this not too cruel? Even for you. That implies that usually Pandora is down with cruelty, but this cruelty is even excessive. This, this specific example then, like what's happening in the forest is fucked up. It was a question that suggested he was already aware of what Pandora wanted. But after she completely ignored it, Fortuna went on to unleash her barrage of magic. Cruel for you, is there a different meaning there beyond like what's happening and what Pandora's used to? I'm not sure. There's the other talk of how maybe this has to do with what Fortuna said. And, and when she first attacked, she implied that Pandora killed her sister and brother, who is Amelia's parents, right? And that is the lie, one of the lies that Fortuna was keeping from Amelia, right? The parents are actually dead. Uh, therefore, a while back, Fortuna killed Amelia's parents. That was cruel. And now she's here for the seal and Amelia, which is even cruel for, for, for Pandora because she's double dipping. I don't know. But after she completely ignored it, Fortuna went on to unleash her barrage of magic. It's implied resulting that they're in dead. Resulting in Echidna becoming very interested in the person. Like, there's, there's no thing as a confirmation in ReZero. Everything is just fucking implications and different wording that, you know, suggests something. Based on the dialogue last episode, it sounds like the parents are dead. Representing greed. You see, both her and Amelia found his ability to survive the attack quite impossible. Yet, there he was completely unscathed. While how? Echidna did have some how? sort of inkling as to how he did it, she wasn't 100% sure as to the specifics of it. Yeah, again, like, this, this is the Witch of Greed. Now you have the fucking Archbishop of Greed. And this dude... Ugh. What about his authority? Well, it's an authority of greed, right? He's very greedy. Now, how does greedy fucking work with, like, his powers? He's such a greedy person, he assumes that everything belongs to him. Kind of like Gilgamesh in Fate. Therefore, <laughs> taking damage is, I don't know. Like, how do you reason as to how he can get his neck fucking, like, turned 180 and he takes no fucking damage? Because he's greedy. So, she actually would have loved nothing more than to stay and see exactly how his authority worked. But Echidna knew more than anyone else that that was something she couldn't do. <laughs> Fuck you. Fucking Tape realizing that they're gonna know too much of the secret if we stick around, so Echidna's like, alright, let's go somewhere else, Amelia. Come on, man. The very nature of the trial demanded she follow the person being tested. And even that was something she couldn't set aside for her own personal greed. Now, given that Amelia decided to stay behind anyway, you're probably wondering how that was even possible. I mean, if she didn't personally see any of this when she was younger, then it's technically not one of her own memories. Are these fake memories? No, it can't be. Which brings into question how Echidna was even able to recreate it. It, it, it. This is the thing about the trials, right? Because like, did this actually happen? Or are these like interpretations based off of Amelia's fragments of memories? I, I don't know. Well, that's something that we actually get an explanation for. Okay. The reason the trial continued the way it did was because everything Amelia was seeing was a construction from the Book of Knowledge. Although some- What the fuck is the Book of Knowledge? The Tomb of Wisdom? It's gotta be the Tomb of Wisdom, right? The synonyms, bro, the different wording. Ah, oh, please, can we just stick to one fucking title? Book of Knowledge. Although some of it may not have been from her own personal memory, the Book of Knowledge was working behind the scenes to adjust the direction the trial was going. Okay. A direction that was dictated by where Amelia currently stood. Okay. So, as long as she stayed in the area with Juice, then she would actually get to see what happened to him. Because the Tomb of Wisdom has the actual history. But where is the Tomb of Wisdom, and how is it impacting this memory right now? Is that Echidna's Tomb of Wisdom? Does it make sense that Echidna has a Tomb of Wisdom? Maybe it does, because, I don't know, fucking Rosal and Biko, right? They both have the copies of the perfect... There's only two copies that exist, right? And those are called Grimoires. I'm gonna assume Echidna gave it to them. Maybe. And Echidna has a Tomb of Wisdom? I don't know. Echidna's advice, though, was to follow her memories. If she didn't, then there was the chance that she wouldn't be able to beat the trial. Even so, Amelia refused to turn her eyes away from a person that was fighting so boldly just for her sake. Come on, It Juice. also didn't help that she found Echidna's forceful advice to be a bit suspicious. It was almost as if she wanted Amelia to go the other way. Why? So that the audience can't see the fucking fight and get more secrets of the show. Fuck you, Tape! That said, 
Echidna assured Amelia that she was free to make her own decisions. She then proceeded to step back and observe the rest of the battle from a distance. As Juice stood to deny Regulus' advance, Regulus went on to say a line that gave more detail behind Juice's standing in the witch cult. Okay. Apparently, he was one of the founders. And he Juice is one of the founders, and yeah, he is very, very old. He had gained such a high standing within it due to his past services and contributions. Like what? Like, like what kind of services? Like, does it have to do with relocating the elves as well? He says he has a lot of regrets, something bad happened before. Regardless of what those may have been, though, Regulus believed that he was far more deserving of Juice's position than he was. <laughs> of course he does, because he's a greedy motherfucker. When it came down to it, he perceived himself as far superior in every way. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I, I mean, that's just his fucking narcissism talking. He, he, he probably thinks he's better in Pandora. And he was just about ready to use this battle to prove it. Now, we know that Juice merged himself with whatever was in the black box he carried with him. Right, and it's implied that Flugel is the one that gave Juice the sloth factor? Based on uh, Juice's words of like, I have no knowledge to adapt to this, but forgive me, Flugel, he said, right? And he said that this was entrusted to him, so I'm going to assume it is the wise man sage Flugel who did this. But what's interesting to note is Pandora's reaction to it. She loved it. When Juice had have said a nice that the trip. only thing he could see now was love, Pandora knew that that love wasn't directed towards her. She understood that his affection was meant Emilia for someone and else. Fortuna. But despite knowing that that's how Juice was. Now, is it directed towards Emilia and Fortuna here? It seems like it at first glance, right? Emilia is in danger, Fortuna is running away, and Juice stood behind to hold off Regulus and, Fortuna and Pandora. But could... And he never talks about the Witch of Envy Satala, though, right? Never has he ever mentioned about the Witch of Envy so far. And another very interesting thing is how at this current time period, Maybe it's already happened, maybe it hasn't. But Regulus destroyed a part of Valachian Empire due to a meteor associated with a certain witch that increased the clout of a witch that is not the Witch of Envy. This is heresy to the cult of the witch, right? But I see Pandora here, and everyone is fine. Because Pandora is not one of the seven deadly witches. She's a being that exists outside of the system. And therefore, the cult members are fine with working with Pandora and even respects her. You know what I'm trying to say right now? Like, this, this cult is supposed to be just for the Witch of Envy. They literally la attacked the Valachian Empire because a different witch was getting popular. Yet, Pandora, the Witch of Vanity, is here. And she also seems to want to open the gate, the seal, right? If we assume that Pandora is simply existing for the sake of the Witch of Envy to be released, if we assume the seal has to do with the Witch of Envy, Maybe that's why they're fine with it, because that's her goal right now? I don't know. Also, her forehead is fucking huge here. This is the pinnacle of beauty to you? Bro, her eye literally is here, then the half of her head is then the fucking forehead, dude. And the craziest thing, the forehead doesn't stop here. It probably extends, but it's even worse here if you think about it. Holy fucking shit. Look at this head. She still couldn't help but admit that it was in this moment that the person who loved him back the most was definitely her. It was a heated confession that Juice simply closed his ears to. Okay. To him, there was absolutely no way that something like her could ever claim to understand how he felt. But it sounds like she's the ultimate empath. Like, she's crying tears of joy because she understands what Juice is trying to protect and it's beautiful towards her. I mean, beautiful for her. Are these fake tears? Which is a kid that doesn't understand really human emotion and she faked a lot of the shit happening with Subaru, right? So, is that same thing happening here? Or does... <laughs> or does Pandora actually know? I don't know. So, with an unyielding sense of determination, Juice refused to accept anything and everything that Pandora was there for, following it up with an attack that surely would have destroyed her body had it hit her. But, as we saw, Regulus returned to the battlefield just as unscathed as he was the time before. Classic. Making it remarkably clear that whatever power it was he had, it was something that prevented everyone and everything from affecting him. This time, though, he actually did get grabbed by the invisible hand because he was caught off guard. They are, the interesting thing about this episode is that there are specific moments where Regulus attacks or gets hit, and it kind of hints at what his powers could be a little bit more and more. Now we know it's just not like a 100% automatic guard, right? If he's unaware or not reacting to it, it can hit him, but even if it hits him, he doesn't seem to really take any fucking damage. That said, Juice's authority did force him to have to use his own to defend leaving them both in the stalemate that allowed Amelia to move on. 
Part of the reason for her change in mind wasn't only the prospect of betraying Subaru if she stayed. It was also because Akedina had mentioned how a battle between two archbishops are rather equally balanced. Unless Pandora herself was to get involved, then this fight could definitely go on for far longer than Amelia imagined. Mm. And it was very clear that Pandora wasn't looking to get involved at all. Even Amelia could tell that she was far too content with simply watching the scene unfolding before her. Pandora says something interesting about Regulus, your purpose. Yeah, the reason I brought you here has already been served. Goodbye. What did Pandora want? Well, she wants to release the seal. She wants to get to the seal. That's goal one. Regulus is a simple tool that Pandora brought along to create this disturbance in the forest. And perhaps to also take out Juice or force Juice to take out, you know, become an archbishop. That means Pandora would have had the knowledge beforehand that Juice does have the Sloth Witch Factor. I don't know, but whatever it was, she's content with it. So, with a partial confirmation that nothing would change, the two spectators left the battlefield for a different location, bringing us now to the emotional scenes between Amelia and Fortuna. While most of this was very much the same, there is some stuff that needs to be mentioned regarding the conversation with Archie. Okay. The first of which is the distinction made between Fortuna and the rest of the elves. You see, Fortuna was apologizing because neither she nor Amelia belonged here. This wasn't the settlement from which either of them originated. The oh! See, I thought every elf here got relocated here based on the wording. But only Fortuna and Amelia. Huh. So the forest elves were already existing. That's that, huh. Okay. The only reason they were even there was because Archie and the others had chosen to take them in. Oh. Had they not, then the none of this tragedy would even be happening right now. So that's why Fortuna felt the need to apologize. Almost immediately after she said it though, Archie tried to reject it with everything he had. Not only did he refer to her as family, but he also mentioned something about a debt that he and everyone else owed to Amelia's mother. You, your older brother, and do not make us out to be ingrates who would forget the debt of gratitude we owe to Amelia's. Hmm. Interesting. Parents are important. I mean, yeah, of course the parents are important, but we have no fucking. Okay. So something happened, but. Hold up. I don't know if Fortuna and Amelia were relocated pre or post death of Amelia's parents. Because if you assume that the parents were dead already, that means that the people of the, the forest dwellers already interacted with Amelia's parents, and that was the reason why they took Fortuna and Amelia in, and they're appreciative of it. If we assume that they weren't dead when they were taken in, that means that they were just nice elves that wanted to accept Amelia and Fortuna and their family, and then something happened where the parents died while protecting the forest, right, due to Pandora, I'm not sure. And that is debts. Regardless, there's something interesting going on here. A debt he was more than happy to pay back by risking his life to defend these two. So, as he was giving this heartfelt plea, Archie also dropped to his knees as if to beg Fortuna to accept his offer. Huh. It was a gesture that made her realize something very important. She realized she was very close to making the same mistake she'd made in the past. What mistake? And that was the mistake of rejecting her family. Okay. This was a regret she'd carried with herself for all these years now. She rejected her family. I wonder if that's the reason why her brother and her brother's wife, Amelia's parents, are dead. But this time she decided she wasn't going to do that. This time she wasn't going to disappoint the people who loved her. Hmm. That's why we see her choose to fulfill her role as the Guardian here. When Fortuna went to give her parting words, the small Amelia had actually covered her ears in an effort to ignore it. It was an action of rejection that made Amelia want to scold herself. Not because it was only disrespectful, but also because she knew the words Fortuna was about to say were ones she absolutely had to remember. Now, after Archie had taken Amelia away from Fortuna, there was actually a cutscene where he had come across an old man who was one of Juice's fingers. Oh. And that leads into a conversation. Wait, oh, what? <laughs> Wonder if this guy, I don't know, they became like the last person. Wait, wait, what happened, right? The fucking, uh... In episode 23, right? The one that got slain by Amelia. I don't know, but that's, that's, that's so interesting. So those fingers... Man, these are OG fucking members for Juice's, uh, Juice's group. ...that could reveal some stuff that's meant for a little bit later. 
So if you don't want to hear what could potentially be some minor spoilers, then go ahead and skip Give to the to following me. timestamp. Give it to me. But anyway, after this man revealed himself to be an ally, he then told Archie about the grave situation awaiting him deep in the forest. There was more than just the leader of the witch cult's radical faction causing havoc. Radical faction, right? Radical faction. So I thought that only, like before Regulus showed up, I thought everyone was just chill. But Regulus's existence tells me that no, there's parts of the church that's fucking crazy. So yes, there are radical factions. Revealed himself to be an ally. He then told Archie about the grave situation awaiting him deep in the forest. There was more than just the leader of the witch cult's radical faction causing leader. havoc. The leader. There was also the black... Regulus is the leader of the, ra the radical faction. So the black serpent demon roaming around as well. This was a revelation that made Archie stumble back in shock. How long has this motherfucker been around though? Because in Frozen Bond, I think Melaquera like... Wasn't it confirmed that Melaquera like melted or like unsealed the black serpent's venom? In order to just like shit on Amelia more, right? I right? I don't know. If Regulus is the leader, then what is Pandora? I I think Pandora exists outside of that hierarchy, man. Like this is like the cult. It's the cult of the witches. I I think the witches are supposed to be like these godly beings, right? Think about it. Like in a church setting, right? There's like a pope. There's priest and shit, but they don't. Even though they're uh, like the echelons of their positions, right? The gods, these deities. They're still above that, right? That's how I see Pandora and like the different positions in the church. This was a revelation that made Archie stumble back in shock. He was well aware that this monster was a calamity worse than the whaler rabbit. To him, the <laughs> the power scaling, bro. The fucking power scaling. The rabbit is infinitely harder to kill than the whale, even though the whale's stronger. But the serpent. And we haven't even seen the fucking serpent yet, bro. All we see is the serpent venom. And that made Archie stumble back in shock. He was well aware that this monster was a calamity worse than the whale or rabbit. Damn. To him, the black serpent was nothing less than a natural disaster whose actions couldn't be controlled by anyone. But it was sealed away before Melaquera freed it. Wonder who sealed the black serpents and its, and its venoms. I don't know. But in Frozen Bond, Melaquera did like unleash, unleash it. Frozen Bond memories. That means that Amelia must have sealed it somehow? I don't know. Because I'm thinking like in Frozen Bond, it was sealed. But in the current timeline right now, shit's about to pop off. We know that Amelia most likely freezes everybody in the Elior Forest. And I'm assuming that the serpent also gets frozen along with the... Venom, and then Melaquera just basically releases it. I, I think that's what's happening. As much as that assumption was pretty much true, there was one specific group of beings powerful enough to control it. The witch. And those were the existences classified as witches. So for the Black Serpent to be here right now in the forest could only mean that a witch was here as well. Pandora. Right? The thing is... All the witches except for the Witch of Envy were thought to be dead. Yeah. And it couldn't be the Witch of Envy because she was sealed away in the sands of a far-off, undisclosed location. The witches beside the Witch of Jealousy or Witch of Envy are long destroyed, we know that, because Attila obviously consumed them. And the Witch of Jealousy should herself be sealed in the sands off of far off. Sands. Sands. Desert area. Alright. This gate. This gate. This seal. What the fuck is a sealing, bro? Wanna, wanna know a stupid fucking... You, you wanna know a stupid fucking answer? No, no, no. Here's a way to do mental gymnastics such that the seal is um, still in relation to Satala. <laughs> Basically, this seal, this gate, if you unlock it, if you take the portal, it leads you into the sands far off. Where the actual seal of the Witch of Envy is. Easy! That's all you have to do, bro! That's so fucking easy! Yeah, easy! Now, I wish that it was a portal to another world, right? I, 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 I wish it's a portal to the fucking yeah, seal to the seal. The pre-seal, bro. You thought uh, you, we got multiple seals here, baby. <laughs> but, um, this is very interesting. Sands, huh? Desert area. Don't know enough about Lugunica right now because all I know is Elior Forest and I know of the royal capital known as Lugunica. Aside from that, sands, desert area, no clue, but that's, that's pretty cool. 
right as Archie was about to say what that location was. The old man interrupted him to inform him of a secret witch. One that has remained hidden from the public as the witch cult's Forbidden Witch. The Forbidden Witch. The Witch of Vanity or Vainglory, Pandora. And in lore, vanity I hear then turns into pride, right? There's also melancholy. As soon as Archie heard that there was in fact a witch in the forest, almost every bit of hope disappeared from his body. The only thing that kept him from falling into complete despair was the duty bestowed to him by Fortuna. So both Archie and the old man worked together to get Amelia as far away as possible. And the old man is one of the fingers of juice that we see in season one. But right as they broke into a sprint, the old man's arms were immediately restrained by the tangles of the black serpent's mud. Ooh. Then in only a matter of seconds, those ligaments fell from his body completely. Ooh. His arms detached from his torso as if they'd never belonged in the first place. What was even more unsettling though was that not a single drop of blood had been spewed the entire time. Yeah, and this is such an interesting point. And I'm not sure if the anime is trying to tell us something specific here about how the, the poison shit or the venom shit for the Black Serpent works, but Archie got like bit in the ankle by the venom thing. And then you saw the poison seemingly spread, right? Through this red shit. And he cut off his leg, right? He cut it off before the red shit got there. And then he froze it. But it wasn't enough. It still started to become more corrosive like this. Implying that the red shit was not a good indicator of when, how much the poison have impacted you. Or maybe it's just being like, it's a one shit. It's, it's, it's just like one shot, one kill. You get bit by it, there's fucking nothing you can do about it. Instead, the areas touched by the serpent had been dried out and shriveled to a state beyond recognition. Archie did try to initiate some sort of action to help, but the old man immediately told him to flee as he knew his fate had already been sealed. So as Archie began to run away from the calamity behind him, the old man's screams could be heard in the distance as his entire body began to collapse in the same way his arms That's did. That's so fucked. The last thing Archie saw when he turned his head was the- Wait! Wait, wait, wait! That old man is not the finger then! Sorry, my interpretation of what Annie said about him being a finger, one of Juice's men, was that they survived later on and went forward, but no. It's just, Juice already named his men fingers at this point. It, that's what it is, right? They, they were already positioned fingers, so my, I, I thought that the finger system came into play like much later on, but it sounds like no. They were, they were the current fingers, and I don't know, I thought, didn't they, didn't Annie just say, ugh. I'm not gonna go back, it's such a little detail, but I, I thought that some of the, one of the persons there back then was like, you know, made it into ReZero Season 1 as like a crazy finger guy. The plague of the Black Serpent's touch reaching the old man's face, shriveling it to the point that it looked as if his eyeballs would fall out. That was the nature of this crucible of disease. Now, when Archie got his leg tagged by the beast, there wasn't a single moment's hesitation to cut it off and freeze the wound. Exactly, right? It was very intentional. He immediately cut off the leg. But it, sound, it seems like this red corrosive shit is not a good indicator of how much it's already spread. Once it goes in, it's already over, bro. You can't do anything about it. Patient to cut it off and freeze the wound. He also didn't let go of Amelia the entire time either. Instead, he kept her face burrowed in his chest all while playing off the pain as a minor inconvenience. It was his final act of determination as the last standing guardian between Amelia and the evil that was chasing her. Archie, no. Switching back to the fight with Juice and Reg. My man Archie was a guardian for a whole fucking 16 minutes, bro. But that goddamn, he went down just protecting everything. I got a lot of respect for Archie. He didn't have, he didn't have, you know, much of a, like, a long role to play. But in those two episodes, what we saw, Archie was a great guy and... Salute. Guardian between Amelia and the evil that was chasing her. Switching back to the fight with Juice and Regulus, there was a pretty interesting line that came up as Greed was gloating about his power. Hmm? He said that it was impossible for anyone to beat him, regardless of whether they were a sword saint or a dragon. Oh, you're just capping at this point. Nah, I don't believe that shit. Regulus could be defeated by fucking... Come on, Reinhardt could beat him, bro. It's just this ego talking. There wasn't a single thing in this world that could harm his body. Yeah, right. So that's why he could only see Juice's efforts as useless. In fact, Regulus didn't think of Juice's actions as anything at all. To him, he was just putting up with a minor annoyance. 
something that couldn't even amount to the same level as kicking a pebble on the road. Psh. As for Pandora, it was quite apparent that she needed neither Regulus nor the Black Serpent to get what she wanted. She didn't need it to happen? Well, we've seen her crazy powers. I thought that she brought them in as like useful tools to just start chaos and then lead to the seal. And that was a fact that Regulus was quite aware of. But unlike in the anime, Toes. Pandora did explain why she ultimately decided to bring him. She said that she just wanted to see how people looked when they earnestly strive towards their most important goals. This sounds like Pandora is obviously, you know, she's not a human, she's a witch. And what do we know about witches? They're, they don't have human values. They don't understand human emotions, right? Kind of like Echidna. Therefore, Pandora simply wants other people suffering and sacrificing and work towards their dreams and ideals. And all about that is like what humanity really is and something that Pandora herself doesn't understand. Is, is that what it is? Like she wants to know. Kind of like, kind of like Kide in Fate Zero, right? Kotomi Nekide is a blank template, just a good little church boy who's been told what to do all his life, right? And now he wants to understand what it means to really be a human with these different pleasures. Maybe it's not the correct, the best uh, comparison, but someone that just wants to know what this other group of people are like, are like by understanding their psyches and like, like their personalities and what they strive for. That's why she's crying when she saw Juice and Fortuna just like suffer and be together. And that's like the ultimate form of like human emotions, love. It's a statement that could be perceived as rather innocent. But really it was nothing more than an elegant way of saying that she just wanted to see them struggle. She wanted to see the desperate faces of people who had been backed into a corner. It was after this that a- I can't tell if she's just a sadist or she wants to like be able to relate. See them struggle. But really, it was nothing more than an elegant way of saying that she just wanted to see them struggle. Okay, I mean, based on what Aninius is saying, if these are actually what Tape wants us to understand, for Pandora just wants, she's a sadist, and she just wants people to struggle, and she gets off on people struggling. And it's not about, like, wanting to understand this foreign species known as humans, or, you know, I, I know that Juice isn't really a human, neither is Fortuna, but, like, you know, a non-witch, how they would feel. She wanted to see the desperate faces of people who had been backed into a corner. It was after this that a couple references were made to Juice's other power. Oh? The first was when Regulus was about to stomp his head in. Regulus had mentioned how he knew that even if that body died, Juice would still have all his spares. Possession. It was in reference to all the fingers back at the settlement. Yep. The second reference was from after Fortuna had saved him. As she expressed her sympathy for the poor state he was in, Juice told her that it was inevitable for this body of his to perish. He said that it was an understanding that the finger who gave it to him already accepted. The body that he's in right now. So this pretty much tells us that this isn't Juice's original, original. body. Yeah. In any case, Regulus's retaliation to Fortuna's attack was actually a lot more hostile. The moment he appeared back on the battlefield, he instantly reached for some dirt and threw it much like how he did to Pan. Yeah, and this is another interesting part, right? There's so many interesting parts where it kind of shows a little bit more hints on what Regulus's powers could be. This time, it was not just like an invisible fucking seemingly air attack. He threw dirt in the air, right? And then the dirt then transformed itself into these little uh, needle-like uh, attacks, right? How? Is he literally controlling the atoms? Or is this wind magic? I thought that it was like wind magic. And that's why it made sense of like, we can't really see shit. And everything just seems like an automatic guard. Because if he's active, then he has like a whole like wind shield. He cuts shit through wind. I don't know. Or is this like... Could you not also like... Theoretically say that's like that's controlling like the actual fucking molecules itself? I, I, I don't think he's controlling Earth. Right, because this is a very specific example being shown. We've seen multiple time after time of him just fucking doing this shit and like things just being cut off. So I'm like, is is this just like wind? Is he? But but now that we see this, it's like, is he using the wind to form the dust into those needle-like objects, shapes, or is he controlling the actual fucking molecules down to that atomic level? I don't know. Much like how he did to Pandora. And then and then this goes in, and then. Notice how internally the shit goes out and then she turns into a, like a fucking mist of blood, right? Scattering Boom. the debris in pretty much any and every direction. 
since Juice was the only one aware of what this attack was. He quickly threw Fortuna flat on the ground as that was the only chance she had to avoid it. At first, Fortuna didn't understand why he did. But as soon as she looked at the area around her, it became very clear that Juice had just saved her life. You see, all around her were these countless tiny holes created by the dirt that had been tossed at her. The impact of which was so strong that you couldn't even see the bottom of them. What? It was as if tiny raindrops had fallen straight through the earth itself. Even the trees caught in the crossfire had been obliterated into nothing more than wood chips. What are you talking about right now? I'm confused. What are, you, what are you talking about right now? Truna didn't understand why he did. She was only one aware of what this attack. The debris and pretty much reached for some dirt and threw it much like how he did to Pandora. Scattering the debris in pretty much any and every direction. Yeah. Since Juice was the only one aware of what this attack was. You motherfucker, tell me what it is! He quickly threw Fortuna flat on the ground as that was the only chance she had to avoid it. Because those dirt shit. Because it could attack her too, because I don't know. I don't... At first, Fortuna didn't understand why he did. But as soon as she looked at the area around her, it became very clear that Juice had just saved her life. You see, all around her were these countless tiny holes created by the dirt that had been tossed at her. Yeah. The impact of which was so strong that you couldn't even see the bottom of them. It was as if tiny raindrops had fallen straight through the earth itself. Even the trees caught in the crossfire had been obliterated into nothing more than wood chips. So, this was an attack that both were lucky to have even dodged. That said, the fact they did only went to make Regulus even more mad. As much as he wouldn't have minded making Fortuna- What is the whole point of that last passage there? That you save Fortuna by making her duck because all the different debris that was coming from like the attack from attacking Pandora is still fucking active and caused more damage? That's it, right? I'm just trying to understand if this is hinting at what the power is because if we're still going with like the whole, I don't know, controlling of like winds and different at atomic levels, like w what? You know, I, I understand the describing the damage attack. I understand. We, we, and he literally said, you save Fortuna by fucking making her duck. Exactly. The dirt. The dirt was thrown. And then Juice made him, her duck. That's it. That, that, that's, that's literally it. Also, you know what the most cringe shit is? Motherfuckers in chat that's already led a red ahead in the light novel. Potentially acting as if they don't actually know the actual fucking secrets. Trying to be like, oh, I, I think I know what's going on, but if I say it, it's a spoiler. Of course you fucking know what's going on. <laughs> the point isn't the chatter to fucking know. It's for me to go on schizo fucking theories to try to figure out what could be happening. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's just like, he threw dirt. Dirt turns into fucking sharp shit. Pierce Fortuna made her into blood of mist. Fortuna shows up. Regulus throws dirt again. And this time, we duck. Right? We just duck. And we survive. Is there a fucking altitude? Like, is, is, is there anything specific about the ducking? I don't think so. I understand why he did. But as soon as she what his attack was, he quickly threw Fortuna flat on the like how he did to Pandora. This affiliation to Fortuna's- I, I, I want to really understand this part. Juice's original body. In any case, Regulus's retaliation to Fortuna's attack was actually a lot more hostile. The moment he appeared back on the battlefield, he instantly reached for some dirt and threw it much like how he did to Pandora. He loves throwing scattering dirt. Scattering the debris in pretty much any and every direction. Okay. Since Juice was the only one aware of what this attack was, he quickly threw Fortuna flat on the ground as that was the only chance she had to avoid it. So dirt is all around. Fortuna gets flat onto the ground. At first, Fortuna didn't understand why he did. But as soon as she looked at the area around her, it became very clear that Juice had just saved her life. You see, all around her were these countless tiny holes created by the- In space. In space. Let's look at this. It sounds like- I think I'm, I'm, I'm slowly getting it, maybe not, but it's kind of making more sense, right? What the fuck, that's Gilgamesh. <laughs> Come on, load! Fucking pain is so slow! Come on, load! Jesus fucking Christ, the resolution across my ultra-wide monitor and my second monitor on the side 
because it's so fucking fake. Paint just gets overloaded when I first interact with it. But let's look at this, right? Let's look at this. The ground. The ground, okay? <laughs> and then we need Regulus, right? We, we need Regulus, ReZero, right? Let's just get a picture of him. Here is Regulus. He's like here, right? He's like standing here. <laughs> this is gonna be so scuffed. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, whoop. Regulus. Ha! And then, dirt! Dirt everywhere! Dirt, 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 dirt. Just fucking. Hacha! Pocket sand! Okay? Okay? Okay. Pocket sand? We need, we need Fortuna. We need Fortuna now. Fortuna. Give me a picture of Fortuna. Here she is. Too big. Too big. Fortuna... Technically, could have been here, right? Technically, Fortuna could have been here. But... Better use is like, get down, lady! Whoa! Fortuna's down there now. Right? Like, very simple example. Regular threw dirt everywhere around the space. I'm gonna assume that the dirt doesn't exist on the ground here, right? Whatever he threw up here, it does not exist at this, like, lower level where Juice made, you know, Fortuna fucking... Ah! Hold up. Let, let's give her some gigantic fucking asses, bro. And... That's right. Fortuna's ass. Help! Okay. Uh, if there's an ass like that, should the legs come out like this? This looks fucking weird. <laughs> this looks fucking weird. Okay, okay. <laughs> so this is the idea, okay? The dirt is on the air. It's, it's all, the, the dirt is all here, right? The dirt is in this area. And in this space, it literally like holes appeared, right? It's like the pieces of space, right? Whatever you consider space has now just like been erased. Bottomless pits. That's what he's saying right now, right? The dirt that had been tossed at her. Yeah. The impact of which was so strong that you couldn't even see the bottom of them. It was as if tiny raindrops had fallen straight through the earth itself. Even the trees caught in the crossfire had been obliterated into nothing more than wood chips. But it, it sounds like... It sounds like it's going down. You know? Is it going down right now? Because like my assumption was whatever it's in the fucking air now that is like Regulus's fucking domain and he can just like erase shit at like an atomic level. Uh, but I don't know. It it, it sounds like cuz like he, he, it landed behind her. Created bottomless holes in the air. So over here too. So this shit attacked here. Bottomless pit. Fortuna got down and she was saved. It's like, I, I thought that this specific example is supposed to like let us be hinted that Regulus threw the dirt above. Fortuna was below. The area above then just got decimated as if it didn't even fucking exist. Like he's destroying like this, these spaces entirely. But based on any news where he said it got thrown all over the place, then it started to rain down and just destroy everything, including the trees. Maybe, maybe it's, it just like didn't rain down where Fortuna is, right? Maybe it didn't rain down where Fortuna is. So this was an attack caught in It was a at her. You see, all around her were these countless tiny holes created by the dirt that had been tossed at her. The impact of which was so strong that you couldn't even see the bottom of them. Okay. It was as if the impact was so strong you couldn't even see the bottom of them. It sounds like he's literally tearing like... He's just erasing like this fucking space. The impact of which was so strong that you couldn't even see the bottom of them. It was as if tiny raindrops had fallen straight through the earth itself. Even the trees caught in the crossfire had been obliterated into nothing more than wood chips. 
So this was an attack that both were lucky to have even dodged. I'm still confused because now it's sounding less like he's fucking controlling these like fucking space at like, an atomic level, but more of like these fucking raindrops of these dirt are just like going down to the earth and creating this like bottomless fucking void. Because like the Krush example, what happened to Krush's arms, right? The Krush example was like he fucking created, he, he literally like created some kind of wind shit above him and then like deleted something and then Krush's arm was cut off. It's so hard to fucking un- I don't get it. I feel like I'm getting there, but like these are two separate examples that I don't really understand unless I have to fucking study it more and more. Like, it, 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 it doesn't make sense to me, right? If, the, if this example was simply like Fortuna getting down and like this space above her getting destroyed, then like, I'd understand. Because like, okay, that is like, his domain and he's erasing like things at an like, atomic, atomic level here. But now it's sounding like this shit kind of got thrown in the air, then it fucking fell down. But, you know, Fortuna wasn't really there, therefore she was saved. It's, it's weird. I don't, I don't know. So this was an attack that both were lucky to have even dodged. That said, the fact they did only went to make Regulus even more mad. As much as he wouldn't have minded making Fortuna his 79th wife, this behavior of hers was simply inexcusable. It had brought- You're not gonna get it, XD! Do you understand that's the entire fucking content? You're literally sitting there- <laughs> Look at this guy, he doesn't get it! Do you understand that's the entire fucking content? You want me to just read it out right now? I will literally search on Google, what is Regulus's authority? And then I'll know it, and then I'll just say it right now in the video. But that's not the fucking point of this, is it? Right? That defeats the purpose. It's not a matter of whether or not I get it or not. It's me trying to attempt for something, and you following the fucking logic, and to see if it makes sense. And ultimately, it's not about if I'm correct. It's the whole process is the entertainment and the content value. The fuck you sitting there fucking laughing like, tee -hee, you're not gonna get it! Did you fucking get it? Anime only at this point? I guarantee you, your retard ass could not even come this fucking close as an anime only. Sitting on your fucking dumb ass, reading the fucking source material, thinking you're fucking better than anime only. Holy shit, you're fucking pathetic. Brought him to the point where he could no longer control his ego, leading him to rant and act out much like how a spoiled child would. To juice and Fortuna. This way of conduct could only be likened to that of an immature infant. One who just so happened to have been granted powers akin to a dragon. That Akin to a dragon. Just like a comparison. But the more I hear about like Regulus is like... I don't know. I, we don't know exactly how he's able to be this old. Right? Clearly this is a hundred years ago. Maybe he's also doing possession. I doubt it's the same body. I don't know. Maybe he has fucking eternal youth. But sounds like... This guy... This authority... Very scary. Because he's like a toddler. You gave a spoiled toddler these godlike powers. And now he's just going to be power tripping out of his fucking ass. His ego, leading him to rant and act out much like how a spoiled child would. To Juice and Fortuna, this way of conduct could only be likened to that of an immature infant. One who just so happened to have been granted powers akin to a dragon. That was the essence of who Regulus was. Now, even after Pandora had ordered him to restrain his anger, his lashing out wasn't simply a matter of not wanting to be interrupted. This is funny though. <laughs> Up until this part, he was pretty like chill to, for to Pandora. He was, he was respectful saying Pandora-sama, yes, yes. At this point, I think Regulus is pissed off and Pandora said chill, relax, and then he just popped off. Lashing out wasn't simply a matter of not wanting to be interrupted. His true intent was to be treated with the same level of respect that any other person would deserve. Okay. So that meant not getting in his way, not interrupting him when he's talking, and not objecting to what he wants to do. He just wants the same rights as everyone else, but at the same time, he feels like a dictator at the same time. I don't know. Anyone who broke those three requests would be met with the same fate as Pandora. Of course, Fortuna and Juice weren't just going to sit there and accept death either. Despite Regulus taking the time to explain how impossible it was for them to- No one has ever just like tried listening to him though. That's the very interesting thing, right? No one has ever tried to just be like, you know what? Just keep talking. I'm just gonna listen. Mm-hmm. 
Like, what happens if we actually listen to him? Maybe he'll still kill us afterwards. I don't know. Maybe he tried to figure out a way of like, oh my god, you didn't say anything after I said everything. Of the Did you even listen to what I said? How rude of you, and then kills you. Maybe it's never possible, but it's like nobody has actually tried listening. Because well, even in like the beginning of season two, he was like, what did, what did he fucking say? <laughs> He's like, I don't want to fight to Rem, right? I'm really not the type of fight. I'm just here to fucking talk. Like, anybody. Can anyone just talk to, just listen to him and just not fight? To win, they still decided to go against what he wanted, which, as you'd expect, only went to make him even more angry. What brought him to the tipping point, though, was when Fortuna said that she simply didn't care. She proceeded to call him an idiot, then stuck her middle finger up right to his face. What? Leading Regulus to initiate whatever action he felt was necessary to end the two lives and- Wait, 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 wait. Even more angry. What brought him to the tipping point, though, was when Fortuna said that she simply didn't care. Okay. <laughs> she proceeded to call him an idiot, then stuck her middle finger up right to his <laughs> Yo, face. Yo, why did you see that? We didn't get Fortuna flipping off Regulus, bro. That's amazing cut content. <laughs> Leading Regulus to initiate whatever action he felt was necessary to end the two lives in front of him. Before he could follow through with it, though, that's when Pandora returned to show her first display of power. Yeah, and this was not strength. Her burying Regulus down into the ground, I don't think is Pandora's superhuman strength. No, I think that she's fucking reality bending. To show her first display of power. She spoke words that looked to have been immediately reaffirmed by the world itself as if the very fabric of reality had been changed to match whatever she saw fit for it. Like when she says Regulus should not be here, he should be home with his many wives, and then he just, boop, disappears. The only way Fortuna could even attempt to understand it was that the world had altered itself out of respect for Pandora's own opinion. It did- Out of respect for Pandora's opinion, so you're telling me that this power is dependent on whether or not the world actually respects or disrespects her opinion? It didn't matter what anyone else saw or observed, since history itself was appearing to be supernaturally rewritten into something completely yes. different. Yes. Very odd, right? And is there some similarities with Pandora's powers in Return by Death? I mean, the only part is the kind of... Like, when we regress... I, I, I guess it kind of is reality changing? It depends on, like, there's no confirmations either of whether or not there's, like, these timelines are being reset or these continues and you're hopping to a different one. Pandora just seemed to be able to rewrite history, right? All the different trees that were under attack, that, 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 that collapsed during the battle with Regulus is suddenly back now because Regulus isn't here anymore. But there's got to be these restrictions, right, where she clearly cannot just say, you will give me the seal, the seal will just appear in front of me. Right? She can't just do that. She still needed to act as an evil fairy and bait child Amelia to get to the fucking seal, right? So, her powers are not this, like... She, it's, it's not like she's in complete free will creative mode, but... It, she does seem to have a little bit of that. That was all either Juice or Fortuna could make of it. But anyway, the rest of the encounter was pretty much as we saw including the ending involving Amelia running to find the seal. So that was everything we missed out on from episode 43. And now we know that the seal is not a seal to release Satala, but a seal to get to the desert parts where Satala is held. I don't fucking know, bro. A seal that seals away the land that Satala is sealed in. That's some extra fucking precaution. I still want to think that this seal has to do with the fucking basketball we saw in Amelia's room, but maybe that's not the case. If you're wondering about the first seven minutes of the episode, well, all that stuff about Ryuzu comes from portions of Chapter 2. But that still hasn't been fully covered yet. Okay. So I'll wait for the next episode before talking about anything with that. Now, before I go, I just want to remind you guys that a backup channel has been created in case this one gets- Ah, uh, I'm sure there's fucking copyright strikes happening, right? Terminated. You can also follow my Twitter for updates should anything happen while I still have these two copyright strikes. Two copyright strikes from what? Does anyone know at this current time? Because, like, I know that, like, Echidna was suffering from copyright strikes on Katakawa due to ReZero, the If Greed Route content, but that's very interesting that back then, Katakawa was just going fucking crazy with this shit. Hopefully, things do work out just fine, though. They did. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for- Alright, I think that, um, the most interesting things in this video definitely has to do with Regulus's powers, first and foremost, right? Is there anything really else? Not really. Am I forgetting? Because 
well, the radical side of the fact, the witch cult. I mean, I was kind of already like, imp like uh, implying that when Regulus was crazy, but well, Regulus hasn't really changed personalities in the present versus past, but Jews had. Therefore, there is a radical faction. Regulus is the leader of that part. Um, the witch of vanity. Well, I, I'm sorry. I'm I've completely fucking forgot about that shit because all I care about is this, right? I, I was just fucking focusing on this the entire time of like. How does his powers work? So this picture probably makes no fucking sense, but <laughs> but uh okay. So let's one, one more time. Okay, w one more time. One one last time. Okay, <laughs> one last time. Okay, Regulus, sand attack. Right, sand is everywhere. Dirt is everywhere in the air. Betrugus says, "Get down, Mrs. President." Ooh. Okay, we're down. But what I'm wrong here is it's not like this space suddenly just turned into void, right? It's not like these dust particles just like were then just erased into space and you couldn't see bottomless. No, it's that ch -ch 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 -ch. You see what I'm doing? The dust was hitting the ground like a rain and you could see like a bottomless pit. It's as if like space itself was just, just disappearing, right? And because Fortuna was outside the range of this dust rain shit happening, she survived, thanks to Juice, right? Can, can, can we assume that? Right, she's outside of it. Anyone confirm? She is outside of the dust shit, that's why she survived. Because I thought that this specific example was supposed to tell me that only Fortuna lived here because she ducked early and then the space above her got destroyed. You know? I thought this specific example was the space above her getting destroyed and Betrugu saved Fortuna by making her duck, but now it's sounding more like, while yes, she did duck, the parts, the rain went around her due to the nice positioning, and that's pretty much it, right? Regulus throwing sand at them, just like one throws a baseball, Juice pushes Fortuna and the millions of baseballs pass through where she was piercing through everything. That's not making sense to me. The dust went everywhere above, then it fell down, like a bottomless pit, like rain. And Fortuna's positioning, thanks to Juice, making her duck, made her survive. But I, because of the ducking thing, I thought that it was simply like the positioning of the space getting destroyed, but I don't know. What does it mean at the end of the day? The dirt? Regulus can control this shit, and it falls down really hard. To the degree of just destroying the ground. Bottomless pit. It's just... I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't know! I don't know! Basically, just don't get hit by it. Also, one has to also then ask, right? Why does he need the dirt there? Because he can't just do that shit with wind. Right? Like, he cut Crucius' arm off. Seemingly with nothing. There was no dirt, you know? There was a very specific reason why the dirt was here. I feel like this is such an important key secret, you know? Like, if he didn't need to rely on dust particles, he could simply just tear everything around with wind, which I thought he was just doing. I thought that he has this ultimate control of wind. He needs to activate this wind barrier to not get hit. He just cuts shit off by just doing this shit with the fucking wind. But now it's more like, well, the dust is also involved sometimes. For ease of use, maybe? Because he's still using the wind along with the dust particles? Or he just controls this shit just at an atomic level? Is he, is he controlling everything at an atomic level? Therefore, the dust shit falling down? Uh, I, don't fucking, I don't fucking know, but hey, I feel like <laughs> we're getting a little bit closer. I feel like what Annie and you said specifically about the cut content when, and, and when Crucia's arm got cut off, that was very interesting, right? About how... He thought he, he like, tore away like a space, like he created some sort of wind shit above him, then like tore away at like a space, and then somehow it created such a fucking clean cut to Crucius' arms, and even Rem was commenting about, wow, what an amazing cut, which maybe implies that the, the, the preciseness of the cut is almost like, you know, uh, like, like the space just being clean, just erased away, like, you know Isekai Shikaku, right? No longer allowed in another world. That, that fucking gluttony guy where 
his chomping like out of fucking nowhere. Uh, that chomp would just, just fucking show up and just cuts away out of the part of space. Like I thought he was doing something like that, but the more I think about it, <laughs> the more confusing it becomes. Anyways, please go fucking like Mr. Annie News's video. Here's the link to the channel. Check out his comment. Check out his content if you haven't. Here it is. And I will see you guys next time.